And then at 11 o'clock, uh, they'll be launched off the deck of the Oar Town uh, for a flight to Honolulu. And from has been in its uh, dress white uniforms, or in the case of the Marines, in their dress blue uniforms throughout uh, today's events in honor of this historic occasion. And at dinner tonight in the officers' wardroom, all the officers turned up in their uh, starched white uniforms. Uh, but the three astronauts apparently didn't have any uh, proper uniforms aboard, so they showed up in their pale blue uh, space agency overalls. They do have uh, at least one uh, indication of military rank, however. They were given uh, caps by Captain John Fifield, the commanding officer of the Yorktown, and the visors of the caps bear the scrambled eggs as a sign of rank. The astronauts uh, are on the hangar deck. One of the ship's stewards is uh, cutting pieces uh, from this enormous cake handing them to the astronauts who in turn hand them to various members of the crew gathered on the hangar deck. The hangar deck is decorated with uh, signal flags. Uh, the platform uh, has as its backdrop an enormous American flag. All the helicopters have been brought down from the deck. The helicopters you down here on the hangar deck. And the ship itself, the Yorktown, is uh, sailing at a very rapid speed, very nearly its top speed toward uh, Honolulu. It's going about 27 knots. It's using seven of its eight boilers, and uh, you can feel that the ship is, uh, is moving at great speed. These uh, sailors and crew members uh, were away from uh, home on, at sea on Christmas, and I think the captain would like to give them the treat of getting back to port as soon as possible. This is a CBS News special report. Hawaii greets the Apollo astronauts. Reporting to you from CBS News headquarters in New York, correspondent Steve Rowan. Good evening. The Apollo 8 astronauts, suffering nothing worse than the loss of a few pounds and the dry eyeballs Jim Lovell complained of and for which he's been given some eye drops, are en route home at this hour. That journey actually began yesterday almost the minute they and their blackened spacecraft were aboard the carrier Yorktown. The ship, making all the speed it could, about 35 miles an hour, steamed north from the recovery zone for some 15 hours. Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders spent about seven hours of that time being examined by space agency doctors, who indicated that the men were as physically fit as if they'd done nothing but take a brisk walk around the block instead of an extended trip around the moon. The astronauts had dinner in the wardroom, cutting the traditional cake. Lovell, a Navy captain, presided at re-enlistment ceremonies for several of the men who serve in Yorktown. This morning, it was breakfast with the chief petty officers, who boast of having the best food aboard. And then, in an eight-passenger twin-engine Navy cod plane, the three were catapulted off the deck for the final few hundred miles to Hickam Air Force Base near Honolulu. We'll show you highlights of that brief but exciting visit to Hawaii after this message. It was a warm afternoon at Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii, and a crowd of perhaps 7,000 on hand to greet astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders was a colorful one. Also on hand was CBS News correspondent Bill Stout. 
So after six days and more than half a million miles at speeds and distances no man ever before has even approached, the three astronauts make perhaps the most important leg of their journey homeward in this old, slow, and noisy propeller-driven aircraft called the COD for carrier onboard delivery. The COD that took them back from the carrier Yorktown, which fished them out of the Pacific yesterday. At the door in the orange shirt, Deke Slayton. He's shaking hands now with Frank Foreman, the commander of Apollo 8. There's Jim Lovell, and in back of him, Lieutenant Colonel, he was promoted today by order of the President, Lieutenant Colonel Bill Anders, the youngest of the three astronauts, a rookie in space flight, as Walter Cronkite kept saying. Slayton now, Director of Astronaut Training, will make the trip back to Houston with these men. He's probably been closer to all three of them, closer in purely personal terms, than anyone connected with the manned spacecraft program. Foreman taking off his hat and waving. This is the receiving line. Governor John Burns of, Hon of Hawaii, the first one, those three Honolulu hula girls, preceding even the governor. Next is Rachel Sullivan. She was an Olympic diving star for Hawaii in the recent games. That's Senator Hiram Fong. Lays being placed around their necks one at a time, with a traditional Hawaii sign of welcome, a kiss on the cheek. Foreman shaking hands now with Senator Daniel Inouye. That's Lieutenant General J.J. Navarro. Admiral J.J. Highland. Next to him, now shaking hands with Frank Foreman, Mayor Neil Blaisdell of Honolulu. And this is Lieutenant General T.E. Hutchin. He represents Admiral McCain, the Commander-in-Chief of the Pacific, who is currently in Vietnam. And last, Rear Admiral F.D. E. Bakudis. Commander of the Apollo Recovery Forces that swept the Pacific and did such an incredible job of all but blanketing the splashdown location these men finally arrived at yesterday. Governor Burns, Foreman, Keith Slayton, Lovell, and coming up last, Bill Andrews. Ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure to introduce His Excellency. John A. Burns, Governor of Hawaii. Thank you very much, Deke Slayton. Senator Fong, Senator Inoue, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my fellow citizens. Each of us here today has a rare opportunity to share in what is certain to rank as one of the proudest moments in Hawaii's history. We are indeed honored to welcome and to extend our warmest aloha to our three space pioneers as they step on Hawaiian soil in making their first contact with solid Earth since following their historic journey to the moon. <coughs> Needless to say, the entire world stands in admiration over their breathtaking achievement. <coughs> what they have done is a tribute to all who have contributed to our society's store of scientific and technological knowledge, as well as to the personal talent, abilities, and courage of the Apollo 8 crew. Their achievement, too, is a tribute to the human spirit, which has driven man to ever greater heights of achievement and to fresh frontiers of conquest. <coughs> the Apollo 8 mission is an inspiration to each of us. Its success once again proves there is no limit to man's accomplishment, only to our imagination and to our vision. But this is a moment for each of the three astronauts to compile, comprise the Apollo 8 crew. It is my great pleasure, my high privilege, <coughs> to present to you, my fellow citizens, and to all people everywhere who can see this program throughout the world, the first men who have journeyed to the moon and back, Colonel Frank Foreman, United States Air Force. <laughs> Captain, United States Navy, James A. Lovell, Jr. and Lieutenant Colonel William A. Anders, United States Air Force.
as of today. <laughs> and now, Colonel Frank Borman. Thank you very much, Governor Burns. Uh, you know, just 16 years ago, I stopped here in Hawaii uh, as a second lieutenant going the other way, and I spent Christmas Eve here, and I didn't get near this reception. But I must say that even then, the people were warm and friendly, as I sure they am today. I I'm only sorry that we can't spend more than the 20 or 30 minutes that we have here be before we have to leave on our way back to Houston. And on behalf of all the thousands of people that really contributed to and participated in and made our flight possible, I'd like to thank all of you for being here today. And uh, all I can say is I hope we can come back and visit you again soon. Thank you.